Thank you for joining us here at Legacy Church Online. Our prayer is that you were inspired by the message and that you were encouraged today. If you'd like to help continue to give financially, you can do so on the website or many others have even dropped it off here at the church. We appreciate your generosity. We appreciate everything that you're doing. We would lo also love for you to connect with us. Connect with us on Facebook. Connect with us on Instagram. Go to our website. Send us an email. However you can get connected with us, we want to stay connected with you. We love you. We thank you. And we cannot wait to meet with you in person again. God bless. Good morning. Good morning, Legacy Church. Let's stand and let's worship him this morning. So when 
shake someone's hand, be friendly. Baby 
so hard to see it took me so long to believe it you choose someone like me to carry your victory perfection could never earn it give what we don't Take the broken things, raise them to glory. You are my champion, giants fall when you 
to sing this out.
Father God, I thank you, God, for every person that's walked in this house, God. I thank you, God, for every person you've called here, God. I thank you, God, that they've chosen to be here, God, and be ready for what you have for them today, God. God, I pray over every heart in this room, God, and every heart over this building, God, that their hearts are ready to receive what you have for them, God, that their ears are ready to hear what you have for them, God. And I pray, God, that there's no distractions, God, that we're able to focus in, God, and hear what you have for us, God. God, I pray you're going to continue to build the people in this church, God. You're going to continue to strengthen them and love them and encourage them, Father God. And whatever you bring today, Father God, we are ready to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. I didn't have the mic ready. Can we just give the worship team an amazing round of applause? <sighs> Good morning. Good morning, guys. Um, this is the last week of our series, Heart of Worship. And I don't know about you, but this has really been life-changing. It has really been such a blessing for me personally. And I love to worship my God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, we love to worship our God. And throughout this series, we have talked about the posture of our hearts, the difference between praise and worship, um, the idols that we might have. And Caitlin brought it last week, talking about making our worship personal and authentic. And boy, let me tell you, it was a good word. It was a good word. So I don't know how I'm going to compete with that. Not really compete, but whew, it was good. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm extremely nervous up here. Uh, I have been nervous to bring the word because this does not happen often, okay? I don't think I've ever spoke in main sank before. Now, if you get me in front of teenagers, I will talk your ear off, okay? I can speak to teenagers all day long. But this is a new one for me. And so bear with me. I do get a little bit emotional. Um, so yeah, so just bear with me. Um, now, I know you guys have heard me when we've been up here worshiping or like during altar when the spirit gets a hold of me and I start using my mom voice as the teenagers say it. They're like, man, you used your mom voice today. I'm like, listen, when the spirit gets a hold of me, I, I, can't, I can't help it, you know. Um, but I'm excited to bring the word that God has given me. Um, and this morning, I am going to piggyback a little bit on pretty much everybody <laughs> that has been before me, okay, and talk about what worship brings. Now, look at your neighbor and say, worship brings. Worship brings. Worship brings. Now, look at your other neighbor and say, I'm sorry I chose them first. Sorry I chose them first. God, I thank you today. God, I thank you for your amazing presence and your anointing in this place, God. Lord, I pray that you would just let every heart be softened to receive your word, God. I pray that every ear be open and ready to hear your word, God. And Lord, I pray that you would just speak through me, God, as I bring what worship brings. In your name we pray. Amen. So worship brings a lot of things, right? It brings the happy, good feels. Yeah, yeah. It brings healing. 
It brings conviction. It brings fake eyelashes on the floor, right, Sydney? <laughs> it, it brings peace and so on. Worship can bring so much. But I'm going to focus on three specific things that God has put on my heart. And with that being said, my first point is worship brings light. Worship brings light. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a lot of darkness in the world right now. Whew. There's a lot of darkness in the world right now. And if you don't, you might need to open up your eyes and look around. Um, the next generation calls it woke. So you need to woke up, okay? You need to woke up if you don't see the darkness. <laughs> That was a Harlan joke. He put that in there. I probably didn't deliver it the way he would have. So, sorry. But <laughs> there's a lot of darkness in the world from TV shows, movies, music, social media, friends, family, depression, anxiety, addictions, idols, morality, what society says is okay, what politicians claim is right to everything in between. The world is dark. Isaiah 3, 5 says, people will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old and the nobody against the honored. We need to worship to bring light into the dark world. We need to make our God the most important relationship that we have. We need our relationship with God to be the most important relationship that we have. In this message, whew, in this message, I'm going to attempt to reveal to you what I believe God revealed to me in my dreams. Um, now, I am a dreamer. How many dreamers out there? Now, I, I'm, I'm not talking about those weird dreams that you have because you ate Taco Bell right before you went to sleep. Okay, I'm not talking about those dreams. I'm talking about, like, God-given dreams, okay? So God gave me a dream not too long ago about the next generation, okay? Our kids, our nieces, our nephews, brothers and sisters and grandkids were disappearing, Parents were looking for their kids in a panic, and then they would disappear as well. Then a group of us, we went looking for them, and it, it, it seemed like no matter how long we looked for them, it was like we couldn't find them. But after some time, after some time, we found them in a dark room. And when we went into that room, we turned on the lights. But the moment we got a hold of our kids, the moment we started hugging each other, the lights went out. And it was pitch black. And it was like they were ripped from us. I can't, I can't tell you, like, I wish I, could, I wish I could just show you what I saw because I woke up in, like, okay, I need to pray over my household right now. But it was like they were ripped from us. The moment the lights went out, they were gone from us. And we could hear each other, but we couldn't see each other. And we couldn't find each other. It was like we were in this black void. And no matter how much we searched, no matter how close we thought we got to them, because we could hear them, we couldn't find each other. Even the people that we were with, like our spouses and stuff, we couldn't find each other. Um, and then we heard some of our kids on the other side of the door saying, they found them. Let's go. And we were all like, no, don't come in here. Don't come in here. If you come in, you will get trapped in the darkness. And that's when I woke up. And boy, let me tell you, I started praying I went and checked on my kids. I started praying over them because that dream, oh, it, was, it was crazy. Anyway, oh, what God is telling me is that the darkness in this world is ripping our loved ones away from the light. The darkness in this world is ripping our loved ones away from the light. He is saying if we don't have a relationship with him, where we're spending time with him, 
in his word, worshiping him, what are we worshiping? Who or what are we spending our time with? Who or what are our students spending their time with? Whew. The farther you get away from the light, the darker things become. Parents, and I want you to be mindful, because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, okay? And, and if we aren't being the examples, if we aren't teaching our kids about God, if we're not bringing them to church, that darkness is going to take them, and we won't be able to find them. And it's a scary notion. It's a scary notion to think. And I'm sorry, I know this is heavy stuff. And I really didn't want my first time up here to be so heavy. I was like, God, why? But, I, but God really wanted me to talk about this because it's what's happening right now. All around the world is the darkness is ripping our, our loved ones away from us. But can I tell you something, though? John 1, 4 through 5 says, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Whew. Can I say that one more time? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In other translations, it says the darkness cannot overcome it. And man, if that doesn't want to make you shout, ah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when we worship, we are driving darkness away. And now I want to show you something that God showed me. And you guys might already know this. I don't know. But um, so Lucifer, a.k.a. Satan, was an angel of worship. OK, and Lucifer means light bearer or light bringing, okay? When Lucifer decided to worship himself instead of God, he was kicked out of heaven, and his name changed. And so Satan, which means adversary, opponent, conflict, or enemy, and devil, which means the chief of evil spirits. And darkness symbolizes evil, okay? So when Lucifer was worshiping God, he was bearing God's light. As soon as he turned away from God, darkness took hold. He was cast out of heaven, and he became the enemy, the chief of evil spirits. And he no longer had light in his heart. He had darkness. Whew. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I'm nervous. I just need to. Okay. When we worship God, we are bearing his light. We are not just bearing the light for us, but we are bearing the light for the people around us. And that's why it is so important to be in relationship with God, why we need to be in his presence and to be in worship. Because, because God shines his light through us to those around you and to overcome darkness. And that light places a hedge of protection around you, which brings me to point number three, or two, sorry. Point number two, which is worship brings covering. Everybody say, worship brings covering. So Psalms 34, 7 says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. We have a resource that is greater than any attack the devil can launch against us. Would you like to know how to activate those angels in your life? The most, the most important key is worship. As you offer up your praise to the Lord, the passage we just read tells us that that's when the angels are most active. And Jesus defines, okay, Jesus defines fear as worship for us when Satan tempted him in the wilderness. Jesus responded by quoting Deuteronomy 6.13, which says, you shall fear the Lord your God. But he changed the word fear in Matthew 4.10 to worship. And he said to the devil, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God. When we worship the Lord, his angels 
camp all around, or all around you, surrounding you to deliver you. If you're going through a difficult period in your life and you are fearful, choose to worship him. Fear fills our hearts when we are occupied with ourselves. But when we worship the Lord and we become occupied with him, his, oh, sorry, when we worship the Lord, we become occupied with him, his beauty, his goodness, and his angels surround us like a protective shield. He covers us. Worship brings covering. Prayer brings covering. Now, um, I've been on a worship team for as long as I can remember. Uh, my mom would tell me stories about how when I was a baby, and mind you, this was before I could walk, before I could really talk, um, she said that I would army crawl underneath the pews, before we had these cool seats, we had hard pews. Anyway, um, we would arm, I, she said I would army crawl when I would hear my grandpa, who was the pastor of the church that we went to, uh, when I would hear him start singing, she said that I would army crawl underneath the pews, crawl up the steps, and sing with him. Now, I don't know if you could really say sing, because I was probably babbling more than singing, um, but I have always loved to sing, and so have my children, and we have instilled the importance of God's word and of worship since they were babies. Check this video out. All right, so don't come at me if you see my house a mess. Those are just home videos that I have that I just wanted to share because when you, when you worship at home, when you speak God's word at home, your kids will start doing it too. Ooh. Now, when Zayden was a baby, I dealt with dreams of dark evil spirits trying to take a hold of him and trying to take him. And when I say I dealt with him, I mean for nine months straight, I had three different dreams, and those dreams would last three months each. So I had a dream for three months every night, and then another dream for three months, and then another dream. And, and this is why this kid didn't go into his own room until he was about to, okay? Because... <laughs> I dealt with dreams of dark, evil spirits trying to get a hold of him and trying to take him from me. But they could only get so close to him. And you want to know why? Because we were his covering. Me and Harlan, we were his covering. We prayed over him. We worshiped with him. Honestly, we were um, in, still in a youth band, um, youth rock, and he would be in his car seat, like almost right in front of the drums, <laughs> and he'd be knocked out while we would have, while, <laughs> while we would have practice. 
But God had his hedge of protection over and around him. Satan thought he had him. Satan thought he had him, but he couldn't get close enough to him because God had him covered. When you pray over your kids, when you have worship music on in the house, when you bring them to the house of God, you are covering them. You are covering them. When they can't do it themselves, you are there to do it for them so that God will have his protection and his covering around them. Psalms 32, 7 says, you are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Worship not only brings light and covering, but it also brings victory, which is my third point. Everybody say, worship brings victory. Oh, come on. Say it like there's a battle that needs to be won today. Worship brings victory. Uh, that, that's what I'm talking. Listen, me and my husband are youth pastors, so we, we need y'all to, to preach with us, okay? Sorry. <laughs> um, worship is how we fight our battles, and not just our spiritual battles, but the physical ones as well. There are many stories in the Bible of victories that were won through praise and worship. Some of them include uh, Gideon, Joshua, King Jehoshaphat, the sinful woman, and Mary, and so many more. Did you know that praise confuses the enemy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, praise confuses the enemy. And I'm going to give you a prime example right now. And we're going to go to Judges chapter 7. And we're going to start at verse 17. And it says, watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. And Gideon and the hundred men, and I, I just want to stop right here and let you know something. Gideon started with an army of 32,000, okay? Then when it came time for battle, God only let Gideon use 300, 300 men. He went from 32,000 to 300 men. And there were about 135,000 Midianites. And it was said that they couldn't even count the camels. Like it was like grains on the sand of, of the seashore. Okay, so there were, they were very much so outnumbered. They were very much so outnumbered. So Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed out the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew their trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding um, holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp. And some of y'all need to take position today. Some of you guys need to take position in this room right now. Many of you need a victory today. And it looks like your enemy is way bigger way stronger, or possibly you have already given up. But take a look at this. All the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. Praise confuses the enemy. Praise confuses the enemy. Man. And I love this picture because it starts with an act of brokenness. It's a picture of worship. The first thing they had to do was take that clay jar and break it. You see, God uses broken things. Whew, I don't know about you, but I am broken. I am broken. And a lot of the times... We think that worship is an expression of our strength, but really it's an omission of our weakness. 
an outpouring of our weakness. And just like the sinful woman who wet Jesus' feet with her tears and poured out that jar of perfume on his feet and wiped them with her hair, like Caitlin was talking about last week, she came broken to Jesus. She came broken to Jesus in worship and was spiritually healed. Worship brought her victory that night. And if I could get the worship team to come up here. When we come humbly and broken before him in worship, we win those battles that we are fighting. And it brings us victory. I'm going to say it one more time. Worship brings light. Worship brings covering. And worship brings victory. If everybody would stand up. I don't know how long I've gone. Hopefully I get you out of here sooner than others. (laughs) And I know some of you may be thinking in this place right now, man, that message was heavy. And yeah, it was heavy but it's necessary. God wants you to know that when you worship him, when you put him first, there's going to be light not just in you, but in your household, in your family, in your friend group. When you worship him and you're in relationship with him, he's got you covered. He's got that hedge of protection around you. battles you are facing that seem to be so big that you don't think you're going to make it. Those battles that you just want to give up on. He's saying don't give up. Don't give up. Worship me. I know you can't see it, but I'm in front of you. I'm behind you. I'm all around you fighting those battles for you. Don't give up. Don't give up. If everyone would bow their heads and close their eyes. Some of you may be dealing with darkness hitting your household or the people you love. You may be the only one in your household, in your family, or in your friend group that is bearing the light. And it takes a toll on you. You are seeing the people you love change. And you may see them or hear them, but you can't find them because the enemy has a hold of them. Some of you may be going through a difficult period in your life and are fearful or anxious. And you need God covering over you. 
or you have kids or younger family members that need you to worship for them to be their covering. Or some of you may be dealing with a battle and need a victory. And it seems like from everywhere you look, it's like one step forward and three steps back. But God's fighting for you. And can I tell you something? Nothing is too big for our God. And like Pastor Harlan said at the beginning of our series, we've tried to understand God so much that we've made him smaller than he actually is. So if I can get our altar workers to come up, our prayer team to come up. Some of you may be dealing with specific, uh, with specific things like the darkness, the covering, or the battle. Or some of you may be dealing with all three. And listen, I'm right up here with you. I'm right up here with you. So I'm going to pray. And then we're going to worship a little bit. But the prayer team is up here if you need prayer. If you're dealing with darkness in your household, come up here and worship him. If you're dealing with fear and anxiety and you need covering and protection over the darkness, come up here and worship him. If you're dealing with a battle, come up here and worship him because there is a battle to be won this morning. And there is victory in the name of Jesus. So God, I thank you for your word today. God, it was heavy. And it was hard to bring, God. But I know it came from you, God. And so God, I pray that you would touch every heart, God. That you would break chains, God. That you would win battles, God. That you would help them to bring the light, God, and to drive away the darkness, God. For their family, for their loved ones, God. thank you. I thank you for being big, God. I thank you for being bigger than the enemy, God. I thank you for being bigger than the battle, God. I thank you for fighting alongside me, in front of me, and behind me, God, even when I don't see it, God. So as they sing, I just want you to take some time and worship him and praise him.
I just want to pray real quick before we leave, if we can bow our heads. Father God, I thank you, God, for every person that came to hear your word. I thank you, God, that their hearts were softened, God, and whatever they got from this message this morning, God, everything that they needed that you had for them, God, I pray that they use that this week as they go out into the world, God, that they may be light bringers, God, that they can be the light that you've called us to be, Father God. God, I pray, God, that we learned so much from this month, God, that we've learned that worship, God, is everything, God. And God, I pray, God, that we're going to continue, God, to use that, God, and how we fight our battles, God, how we draw near to you, God, how we understand who you are is through worship. So God, I pray, God, every person in the house, God, that they may use your word this week, God, out where they go, God. And I pray blessings upon each person in this house. In Jesus' name. Amen. You guys are dismissed. Thank you so much. We love you. Appreciate you. We'll see you next week.